if you're watching this, I've got a deep question to ask you. This question will change your life forever. It doesn't matter if you're 20, you're probably 20, 21, 22, if you're watching this video on this channel, or maybe you're in the older spectrum of that demographic, 30 something, 35, did I guess it right? The age doesn't really matter. What matters is this. I've got this deep question that could change your life if you learn how to answer it. And that's what I wanna talk about with you. Now, this might be a more of a conversational video instead of just an information video. I just wanna to talk to you. This is, gonna, this is not gonna be two minutes, but I can promise you one thing. If you watch this video all the way to the end, this video has the potential to change your life. I'm gonna talk about a few things related to your purpose in life. I've consulted a few people. I've read a lot of things. I've actually written a book about it. So I think I have a little bit of authority to talk on the matter. So here we go. We're gonna be conversating about life purpose. Check it out. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Now, some of the ideas that I'm gonna share here with you, they're not original. They're, they've been around for centuries. And if you have had the chance to read or maybe watch videos of people like Jay Shetty, for example, the guy who wrote Think Like a Monk. I watch a lot of his stuff. I read his book, Tony Robbins. So many books around and a lot of content. They're really great value on YouTube. And uh, obviously Gary V. Gary V is on my list all the time. He's, he's got some amazing stuff on YouTube. Well, the first thing that I would recommend you to do that I've done it myself is to ask, why did I wake up? Why am I alive? What is the meaning behind my life? What am I here to do? And, and obviously you're not defined by what you do, but what you do with the hours and the life that you have in your lungs and in your blood and the breath that you have in your lungs, what you do with it matters. So your purpose of life, the reason you wake up defines your meaning, your significance, your relevance to the world and to those around you. What is the reason why you wake up? There are a few ways you can go about trying to find out your purpose of life. One that I'm very passionate about is this concept of the Ikigai. It's a Japanese concept that was developed in Okinawa a long time ago when some Westerners, Americans and Europeans, that they were studying the happiest people on earth and the people who lived for the longest. And they found this group of people in Okinawa and every conversation they had came around purpose of life in a way or another and they had these four things that all aligned with each other you know the things that you love doing the things that you're really good at the things that pay well obviously you need money and the things that the world needs they are significant that could change the world you don't have to be a world changer but what you do has to have some sort of significance to other people it's what Abraham Maslow would call transcendence. You know, Abraham Maslow had his work with the pyramid and the five levels, but it was incomplete. And at the end of his life, someone found some writings about the sixth level of the pyramid called transcendence. You only achieve significance in life when you can transcend yourself into another person. That is just psychology one-on-one for you. <laughs> Finding your purpose is extremely important. A lot of people will live their lives up until the 70s and 80s, and at the time they reach their deathbed, they regret not living a life with purpose. It is the number one regret that people have, not having a purpose in life. The Ikigai is a great tool. I wrote a whole book about the Ikigai, and it's coming out in English too at the end of the year, so you should check it out. Hey, just a quick note. I know a lot of people consume content through YouTube these days, and if that's your case, and if you're here because you want to learn more, you're not just scrolling through things, I would love for you to subscribe to our channel. That will tell the algorithm on YouTube that you are interested in what we do, and it will recommend this to more people when you hit the subscribe button. So it's right here. It doesn't take much. Just click the button right there, and if you want to drop a like or maybe even write down a comment, it's even better. But subscribe to the channel. That will help us a lot, and that will help you to get more of this content without just being bombarded with a lot of other stuff that don't really matter. <laughs> All right, let's go back to our video. Another really good tool that you could look up, and there is an interview right here on my channel, you can check on this card right here, is the Enneagram. The Enneagram is a personality test. It's been around since forever. 
and there are nine personality profiles in there. I'm not gonna go into depth with it, but if you watch this interview, it's about an hour with a specialist on the Enneagram and you're gonna get a lot of value out of, out of that too. And you can find out your personality, what you're driven towards, your main traits. Obviously, if you're a very outgoing person, you don't wanna work eight hours a day inside an office. And if you're a very inward, introspect person, you don't wanna be very vocal at your job with other people. It's just basic things to help you find your purpose in life. The reason why I say it's the perfect time for you to find your purpose in life, if you're between 20 and 40, it's because we're living in a time and age where the life expectancy of every human being is going up. Not long ago, people would live up until their 50s, 40s even. Now, we're expected to live up until 90. It's not rare nowadays to find people who are healthy on their hundreds. And if science continues to go the way it does, and if uh, medical science specifically, and medical research continues to achieve the goals and the milestones that they have set to, we're probably gonna find ways to live up until 150 years old, sometimes 200 years old and healthy. If you're gonna live for that long, don't you agree with me that it would make sense to have a life that is fulfilled, that gives you joy, that you wake up every day in the morning with a sense of meaning, that your life means something not only to yourself, but to other people around you. Wouldn't it make sense to get up from the bed knowing what you're gonna do with the hours that you have, and when you get back home at the end of the day, knowing that you have done everything to the uttermost pleasure, per se, of your day? I think that a lot of people get into jobs because they've been pressured. Societal pressure, uh, peer pressure, parents pressuring you, kids go to college when they're 20, they have no idea what they wanna do with their lives, and they choose a profession because their mother and father told them that their profession was good. They choose based on economics, not knowing that economics will change in 10 years, in 20 years, and here is the challenge. Maybe three decades ago, you could get along with choosing the wrong profession because at the end of the day, you will get in at 20 and you will get out at 50, probably die at 60. There's not much of room. But if you choose the wrong profession now, why would you waste 30 years of your life doing something that you're not really passionate about, knowing that you're gonna live up to 100? And at a later stage, you might not have the energy to pursue your dreams and pursue your purpose. Two amazing tools here, the Ikigai and the Enneagram. And if you study them, you might be able to find your purpose before you start your career, before you choose your university degree, before you waste away 20 years of your life. I think that makes more sense. We waste too much time. We don't take many things seriously. We go to school, but we don't really learn anything. We turn on the TV and everything we know is just influencer, YouTuber, Netflix, and things are sort of getting out of hand. We're becoming dumber and dumber. Whoa! As artificial intelligence replaces most of the jobs that we have, most of the things that we have prepared for will cease to exist in the next 20 years. If you've studied to be a lawyer, if you're not the best lawyer in your state, pretty much, it is very likely that you're gonna run out of a job. If you're an engineer and the place you work hires 200 engineers per year, you're probably looking at 20 engineers every decade. Why? Because robots and AI can do the job of the average engineer. If you work in the kitchen, it's very likely that you're gonna run out of a job unless you are that exceptional chef that prepares something and people come after you. AI has arrived and technology has arrived and we have to adapt. Like Gary V says, AI is the tractor. Back in the days when the tractor came, a lot of people lost their jobs. What did they do? Some of them got pissed. Some of them got new jobs. What are the new jobs? The bad news is that the educational system does not know what the new jobs are. And everything that we do related to technology, coding, and all of these things that I have no idea, <laughs> um, they are all, foreign to the academia. People learn that on their 
bedrooms when they're 11 and 12 year old. Google is hiring engineers that have never gone to college. We have to think about that. I would recommend that before you choose a path for your life, before you choose a career path for your life, you would choose to go around the world. You will probably spend between 50 and $100,000 on any university degree if it goes through the span of four to five years. Instead of spending 100 grand, why not spend 15,000, maybe 20,000 and go around the world, absorb different cultures, see the world through different lenses, have a different perspective, and then make a decision. Uh, there is expectations that other people create about you and you create of yourself. You create expectations of yourself that sometimes are not healthy. What are people gonna think about me? What are my parents gonna think about me? What are my friends gonna think about me? Everyone's got a job. Everyone's got a family. Everyone's got married. How about me? Well, if you feel what people think about you, you probably fall under that category of people who will do things in life just to please others. People pleaser. If you've watched this video so far, I don't think you're one of them. <laughs> Not really. Another obstacle to overcome is the obstacle of time. We have created this idea in our society that you have to decide what you're going to do with your life before you're 20. And you don't. Here's a nugget out of my book. After a few years of study, I have realized that the decades of our lives, if we live up to 80 or 90, they are really defined by these concepts. Between your 20 and 30, on your 20s, it's the season of your life that you have to find out everything. I've got a friend that's living here in Australia and every weekend we have the same conversation. He would turn to me and said, I feel like I'm not accomplishing anything. I feel like I'm not going anywhere. And I turned to him and said, bro, you started your course. You're checking out a few things. You're living in a different country. You're having different experiences. You're still working on your visa. There is still time. You're only 22. Keep going at it. When you're 38, maybe you get desperate. But now it's time to try everything. And why do we try a lot of things? Because you want to have a good gamma of things that you have tried so that between your 30 and your 40s, you can look back and see, oh, I didn't like this, I didn't like that, I'm not good at this, I'm not good at that. And then you just funnel it down, you just bring it down to maybe two or three things that you are really good at, and then you work on them. Between your 40s and your 50s, then you become that specialist, that person that they will call when they need that specific thing. No one's a specialist when they turn, no one becomes a specialist at 25. You need time. Like Malcolm Gladwell points out, the 10,000 hours, you need 10,000 hours of anything. And if you want to put it very simply, 10,000 hours will equal to 10 years. 10 years doing the same thing over and over and over again until you get good at it. Are you doing videos on the internet? Are you doing videos on YouTube? Well, think about a thousand videos. A thousand videos. That'll take you about 10 hours to do a video. Are you, uh, are you, are you a sports person? Think about maybe 4,000 games. That'll give you 10,000 hours. Or maybe 2,000 games if you practice very hard. 2,000 games, that's a lot. Hey, YouTube is an amazing platform. And what's even more amazing is that we get to do this and use this platform to reach people with this inspiring message about purpose, sometimes pointing them in the right direction, sometimes sharing about our faith. And if you find value in the things that I do, I would love to recommend you to jump on our Patreon page. Right there, we have more than we have here. Here we have videos that add value to people every day, but on Patreon, we have more podcasts, uh, extended versions of this videos, these videos that I do. We have um, merchandise and we have my book that's coming out. So if you really find value in this, why not just join our family, join our community and support what we do so we can wake up every day. And like I always say, we can find ways to love God and love people, inspire them, inspire them through the message, add value to their lives, and empty myself every day. I would love to count on you. So jump on Patreon right now if you can, and then you can enjoy all of the benefits of being part of, of, being part of our family. All right, let's go back to our video. As with everything that I do, I would love to recommend you some books for you to read. And like I said, there's so many books available out there. I've just made a video about books if you want to become efficient. I do want to make a video about the top five books that changed my life. 
But when it comes to finding your purpose, I have a few recommendations. And they're all going to range between Gary Vee, Jay Shetty, and Tony Robbins because I was actually having a look at what they say about these subjects. Gary Vee has a great book called Crush It. It's a good one to read. And again, you can listen to it. You can watch videos on YouTube. And talking about crushing it, Outlier by Malcolm Gladwell, the concept of 10,000 hours, it's there. Great book to read you. If you're starting a business, if you want to go into business, one of the books that I've read, The Lean Startup. <laughs> Believe it or not, I used a lot of the concepts in this book to start a church, The Lean Startup. You don't want fat around the business that you're starting, about the, uh, around the startup. You want it lean, The Lean Startup. Another one, um, From Zero to One by Peter Thiel. Wow, great book talking about innovation. We live in times of innovation. You should read that book. It's an amazing book. If you want to do anything significant in your life, you need to develop habits. You know, the power of habits, Charles Duhigg, Atomic Habits, James Clear, The 5 AM Club, one of my favorite books. It will help you develop so many healthy habits. The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Wow, that's an amazing book. I've, I've been reading a few of his books. Really good one. A few books on the spectrum of faith, The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren, one of the best sold books ever <laughs> um tony robbins awaken the giant within you really good one the search for meaning by victor frankel uh, if you on the journey to find your purpose who that will shake you up for sure and obviously every book you find about the ikigai i think it's a good one and again i would recommend you to read any book about the ikigai and when my book comes out come back and read my one <laughs> wow I've, it's self-promotion i know but this book that I've written, and it's a collection of a lot of concepts and a lot of reading and a lot of research that I've done. So my opinion, it's probably the best book on the Ikigai. So in the beginning of this video, I called you for a conversation. I would love for you to start a conversation. Maybe with me, if you want to put a, a comment down below, I would love to answer your comment. Maybe you have more questions about purpose of life. I would love to make more videos about that. If you want to, uh, you can suggest that. I would recommend you find a mentor. Find someone who's older than you, who's, who's gone where you want to go, who's walked the walk, and just sit down with them maybe once a month, once a week, whatever, whatever works, and find mentors. Mentors are really good for clarity. Clarity is a great barrier. We're not really sure what we want. Mentors can help you. I would recommend you read one of these books that we've just mentioned, so many books. Read one of them, listen to one of them, or just find content on YouTube about them. Uh, read the books and take some time remember that finding your purpose is not an event it's a journey and sometimes it takes your whole life what brings us joy is not the fact that we have found it although I have to admit I think I have found it I've been living it for the last 15 years and I love it it is the best feeling of my life however it's not about it, it's not the event of finding your purpose it's the journey and the search for meaning, <laughs> like Viktor Frankl, the search for meaning in your purpose. If you, if you put yourself in a position where you're constantly asking yourself the question and moving towards what you think is your purpose in life, you will be fulfilled every single day. So it's a journey, it's a life journey, don't get frustrated. It's okay if you're not really sure and you're 42, who cares? You're gonna live until 100, you've got time. I would be scared if you were 90, if you were 80, but if you're 40-ish, you got time. You do got time. Like the Apostle John says, I have much more to say to you, but I have decided to stop here. This conversation can continue another day. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have watched it so far, as I always say, I would recommend you to go on our Patreon community. There's a lot of exclusive stuff there and it's, it would be my pleasure to just have you there as one of our sponsors, one of our friends, one of our family, and you can just enjoy the exclusive content there. And at the same time, you help us spread the word, spread this message of inspiration, spread the right message around the world. All right. So this is me for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. There's a bunch of other videos you can watch here if you want to. They're all talking about similar things and they will all add value to your life. I hope you enjoy them too. God bless. See ya. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never ran.
man, I should've known, man, I still go, go, go.